You are now tuned in to the Free Play Media Podcast Network. Live, Chris Denman. I'm going to tell you about our guest here in just a second. Big thanks to Logboat Brewing, Barrel Beard and Tattoo Oil, all of our sponsors. Very special conversation today. Tony Rock in the building at Gaslight. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good we're to be we're very, here. Thanks it, for having It's me. like I know you already. I, I've, <laughs> I've had Jordan on, I've had Sherrod on. Yes, so, your my first two cousin. people in the yeah. world. <laughs> your younger brother was here a couple months ago. We were having some good chat uh, before we actually went on there, but either way, we'll get into that. We'll get into what's happening this weekend at Helium Comedy Club. Thursday night show went well. Thursday night show went very well. Yeah, That's exciting. small audience, but uh, they were rocking, and yeah, you know, I got to play around with them, have some fun. Nice. I actually got like two new bits, so I was happy about that. Very nice. Yeah. You get a little spark for the weekend. Yeah, yeah, it gets a little nugget that gets me going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're you're based in New York, yes, obviously, Brooklyn, New York. Yes. Yeah, so. Hitting the road, I'm curious about that. For you in particular, for Tony Rock, what are your crowds like whenever you're in St. Louis, if you're in Cincinnati, the uh, you know the hot spots? Uh, what do you mean, makeup of the crowd? Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What's Is it a black crowd? Is it a white crowd? I think I have a nice mix. I would assume, I, I, that's yeah. what I would assume. I yeah. have a nice mix because I've done things that, you know, I've done TV shows for BET, mm-hmm. and I've done TV shows for CBS. So I get that fan base to come out and see me. So I, I think people cool. that draw like you do, that's important because <laughs> you get people that get so used to a certain type right. of show. Right. And even people that regularly go to comedy shows, they get it, and they know when to be quiet and all that stuff. Right. But whenever you can kind of bring people from different worlds together, yes. I think that's huge, and it's not always something that everybody can do, too, because yeah. your comedy has to lend to different you know, right. proclivities. Right. Right? I, I, tell, I tell a lot of comics all the time, like especially for some reason, like black comics, I guess that's the... I'm trying to like be, be PC, but black comics... I, I'm okay with you saying black Younger, up-and-coming black comics think they have to skew black for some reason. Uh-huh. And I tell them all the time, like, funny's funny. If you, like, right. a, a funny joke, a, a well-written joke, is going to make everybody laugh. Why wouldn't you shoot for everybody instead of just trying to make your boys laugh or right. you know, the hood laugh? It's like I try to write jokes that the whole world is going to say, hey, man, that was a good joke. Well, it's working out great. I feel like uh, it's, it's working. Yeah, <laughs> it's working. Yeah, like, well, it's working. working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're in St. Louis. How, how much more luxurious does it get? Yes. Yeah, so you're, you're at Helium this weekend. Last time you were through, and again, I'm just picking apart our pre-show conversation, right. but uh, Shafitz last time I you was were here. Shafitz last time I right. was here, yes. Good time. It, the, the arena show to the club show, I always like kind of giving a little peek behind the curtain to listeners and, and people that are going to come out and see you. Difference with Helium, just more intimate. You're going to be able to enjoy the crowd more. What's the yeah, difference? Absolutely. Be, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, the Shafitz shows I love. Don't get me wrong. You know, I love <laughs> sure. walking out on stage and seeing 6,000 people and <laughs> Telling right. a joke and then having to wait for the wave to go and come yes. back. It's like a different a different timing. How does that play to your ego, too? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The little stuff yeah. I do. I mean, we do some live shows and stuff like that or I'll bring comics up and, you know, I say my stupid little thing or tell people that uh, Roseanne kicked Ian off of uh, Last Comic Standing. Well, and yes. You get, you get that, those little bites of laughter are just so contagious, so... I can only imagine what having six thousand people. Yeah, the wave is, is real. Is very, uh, it's uh, intoxicating. Yeah, and then when I get to do, and then I like to do more intimate settings also because I get to just be kind of hands on with the audience. Right. Hey, where you guys from? And what do you do? And is this your girlfriend? And you know, I can do all of that in an intimate setting. I can't. Can I get that. her number? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't do that in front of six thousand people. People in the front, right. in the back, are like, "Who's he talking to?" You know, so it doesn't work. <laughs> Well, so, okay, so last I heard on, I guess it was, uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, it was Fitz Dog Radio. Fitz you had, Dog. You had, you, you had a, uh, a videographer with you. Yes. We talked a little bit about that, but I was actually curious, what's that for? Are you working on a project? Are you working on a documentary? I mean, you certainly had an interesting I life. Am, I, I am working on a documentary that I don't have a deal for, so we're just, we're just pretty much documenting what how dope this is being on the road yeah so being the, in tv being in yeah, everything so my doc my, my videographer came when i was shooting i, I shot a show called black card revoked to bet mm-hmm. he was backstage the entire time shooting everything uh when i'm well, on the mike epps tour he shot everything 
some of my tour dates, uh, smaller venues he's with me. And we just just capturing the moment, man. So when I when I get to do the hour special, we'll have a lot of content and just like splice in at the so end. So you can or, work in, so yeah. that's fantastic. And we put some of it on YouTube. If you go to uh, Rock the World TV, we have some of it on YouTube. It's just, this is just incredible for a comic that's coming up and they, you know, always want to know is it is it like I think it is, or is it as much fun as just this is this is better than you could imagine. Well, it, it, but if we can't see the documentary right away or the clips, obviously you can go to the YouTube uh, right. account and everything. But is it as good as people assume? Uh, it's better. It's I way would, better. I would it's, think it's, so it's, too. Yeah. I was on a, I was on a flight recently flying uh, to class. Atlanta. Yes, first class. <laughs> yes, and the lady next to me just sat. There. I sat down and she just looked at me and I had my shades on and my hoodie. Right. And she said, I, "I know who you are." And I'm like, "Hey, how are you? Good morning. How you doing?" And she says, "Is it as exciting as I think it is?" And I said, "How exciting do you think it is?" And she said, "I think it's amazing." I said, "It's even better than you think." <laughs> and she said, "That's I, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I people want to hear. It's even better, yes. right?" Because they're going to their account management job. Right. They hate their boss. Right. And they're working for the weekend for a couple beers, but you get to fly to you end up, you end <laughs> all the, you over the place. Your, you at your job. You're staring out of the window. You're daydreaming. You just wish you were somewhere else. And nine times out of ten, I'm where you wish you were. <laughs> Well, you're humble about it. You're at like, least, right? you're not, I'm not saying me. I'm just saying what I <laughs> no, do. I'm, like I'm, no, the no, comic, no, the comic, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the comic's life is where you probably are dreaming. You're, well, th- you're thinking like, man, just I can your, just do that. Your daily routine. You live in New York, and you get to go hang out with you know some of the you, other than your family. Yeah, uh, some of the, <laughs> some of the yeah. biggest. Stars. I get to have a beer with Dave Vitale every once in yeah, a while. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> Dave Chappelle will walk in and go, "Hey, Tony, I saw you on." You know, ah, you should ask crazy. Dave Vitale uh, what happened. Two times ago, he was here. It was one of the first times Helium yeah. had opened. Have you heard about this? No, no. He went to a uh, a club with with a guy from the club from Helium, right? And the guy's uh, a cart, regular a fan. Well, it was a it was a part of the staff. Okay, wait, staff. So they were hanging out. They were cool. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the guy's car got stolen at the strip club. They went. To. <laughs> went to. So like, part of me like felt horrible for the guy. Part of me was like. You're at a strip club with David Tell, and then you got your car sold. Like that's just a really fucking awesome story. It is an awesome right? story, but if anything happens to you and you're at a strip club, you kind of so what, you, what, your family's you close. Yes, that's well, like, some of us, some, some of you, yeah. So I always, when I've been in those, either not necessarily even a strip club, just a seedy club, and you walk out and the sun's coming up. Yeah, I always think to myself, if I got stabbed in the stomach and just bled out right here. <laughs> My mom and grandma, my dad and grandpa, my other the men in the family would you know stoically just kind of you know we're, we're sad. Right. My mom and grandma would say, "Fucking knew it. Always. Yep. Exactly. We. That's how we knew he'd go out." And yeah. They, no. They have all the confidence in the world in me and support me, but it's that uh, that guilty. I'm a group Catholic, and they're like. You were always up to something. If you? I died in a strip club shootout, my mother probably wouldn't even cry. Right? She'd be like, "Yeah, saw She'd this like, one yeah, coming." That was that was it. it Didn't was clean his room. It was written. <laughs> Strip club shootout. That's how I'm going to die. It was going to go down like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> how's, uh, how's New York with uh, the lack of strip clubs these days? No, New York New York has this weird thing going on where New York is not New York anymore. And I'm not talking about the gentrification. You you grow I mean, the, the time you grew up to now, like New York right. has to be- Oh, it's totally different. Way different. The, yeah. the gangs in Brooklyn now are more like West Side Story than, like, <laughs> right. than you know- Dangerous gang. Feuding fashion yeah, groups. When you're a jet, so, yeah. you're a jet all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, yeah. Except it says jets, it just says, what, what Supreme across yeah, their shirts yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, New York's different now, and I'm speaking from like a hip-hop, uh, uh, a urban standpoint. Right. Now New York is following the trends instead of setting them. Weird, right, That's yeah. what I noticed that now. Now it's like, we're not the leaders of rap music anymore. We're following what everybody else is doing. Who is? Uh, it'd probably be Atlanta. I would have guessed. Atlanta. We're not the leaders in fashion anymore. We're just following what everybody else is wearing. You're the rich guy who goes to the dive bar to be like, "See, I'm still cool." Yeah, like, but you're yeah. Trying New to York's pick going up through. A, I don't like it. It's like I, now it's like guys, like the younger kids are like, "We're bloods. We're Crips." It's like what? what? <laughs> you're not. You don't announce that's, that's that. That started buddy. in L.A. We didn't. Right. That's not us. Well, why are we following them? Like, why are we following? We right. follow us now. I don't like it at all. Have you seen a? Uh, I feel like maybe it's... I think our gang should be original. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. We should be killing on our own merits. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Italians, get back yeah, in the game yeah, too, yeah. man. Like, we're yeah. losing out on this. No. So, okay, so I think with camera phones, with things like that, we don't necessarily see as many club fights or anything. You run in some pretty cool circles, some fun circles, I'm yes. sure. Have you been a part of, have you seen any... 
uh, TMZ worthy. Oh, I see, t- I see TMZ worthy th- stuff and, all the and time. It's got to change too, as you like. I notice it now that I'm in my. Th- I'm just turned 34. Just whenever you would go out, you used to be like, if I got to fight, I'm going to throw somebody through a fucking yeah, window. Yeah. And then now I'm like, tired, probably going to get home by 11, you know, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I, I, I wonder too, just running in the circles you do and then having the celebrity that you do, are you, do you get to see some of those well, that we don't know I, about? Two parts to your question, two answers to your question. Yeah. I, I, like I, I grew up in the original Brooklyn. Yes. So I'm down for some scrapping if it comes to it. Sure. But I'm also, you know, I have this celebrity that, that, right. that you said. So I'm on the road uh, a couple of weeks ago with Dave Hellum. Dave Hellum's one of the features I brought out with me. Nice guy from Chicago, from like the nice part of Chicago. Right. We're in a club in Cincinnati somewhere maybe. And there, it's a group can, of guys. Two problems I can already cite with yeah, this. Group club of guys, in Cincinnati. A group yeah. of guys in the corner looking, staring, you know, I'm like, okay, this could get out of hand. And like I'm t- it wasn't like they're fans. It was their they're hungry they didn't, dogs. They didn't look like fans, right? Yeah. So I'm talking I'm talking to the local girls, which local guys always mm, hate because they go. know I'm going to win. Right. And then uh, <laughs> one of the guys starts, walks past. There's like the little, the little I'll go past and scout. Uh-huh. I, I know it all too well. You do. You see so, it coming miles away. So I turn to Dave Hellum and I say, hey, man, you ever been in a brawl in a bar? <laughs> and Dave Hellum, he gets, he's, no, no. And I said, get ready. You're about to be. That's fantastic. It's so calm. He, yeah. he just shook him like stone but, cold. But I said, "Get ready. We about, to, we about to throw down with these dudes." Yeah. And the guy walks past again, and I'm, I'm thinking like, "Here we go." And he says, "Hey, hey man, are you Tony Rock?" Ah. Uh. And I say, "Yeah." <laughs> and he goes to his boy. Yeah, it is him. To his boys, they all come over. They pull their phones out. And they want pictures. That's fantastic. And I look at Dave, and I go, "Almost." almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, they were showing the dip, the same signs, yeah. right? They're yes. kind of tight. They're kind of doing this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the lion that walks past the prey and then goes, "Hey, can we get a picture with, yeah. the, with, the, with the gazelle? Come on!" Right. It's like the difference in the change in, in the climate. Yeah, I was gonna say what uh, twenty years ago that would that would have been, been a brawl, yeah, right? But been now you're the level you're bust at. on this on this on the, uh, stool and. <laughs> It would have been you ever fun. taken anything to the dome, bottle or, or bat or anything? No, I got stabbed in the hip once. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. How'd that go? Uh, I was I was winning the fight, uh-huh. and I hit the guy, and he fell and hit a car mirror and grabbed and it, broke it, and then picked up the glass and just right in my hip. Are you shit? Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. That's not good. And then I think Sherrod just jumped on him and pummeled him to sleep. Good. That, I'm glad to know that about Sherrod. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sherrod's a brawler. Sherrod. Yeah. Sherrod Which is, is funny because he seems, he seems pretty sweet, like a yeah. nice guy. Oh, he's a sweet guy. He's Rachel nice Feinstein, nice so guy like, in the world. Oh, the goofiest, nicest dude yeah, ever. Yeah, nicest guy in the world, sweetest guy, give you the, the, the shirt off his back, but he will knock a guy out. That's how you have to be, yes. though, because anybody that goes around like trying to pick fight, they ain't tough. Like, yeah, they, right, right, right. The bully is, is they're actually, mad that they're short. The bully the, is actually the coward. Correct. Yes. <laughs> See, life lessons here. Yes, we the are bully like. is actually the coward. Dude, that's fantastic. Okay, so as far as projects that, that are going uh, for you currently, obviously out on the road, yes. done plenty of TV, movies, yes. different things like that. Uh, anything we need to know about that you're working on uh, outside of this beautiful documentary? That uh, I had a sitcom on CBS that just got pulled. It was uh, called Living Biblically. It was based on the novel by A.J. Jacobs, A Year of Living Biblically. If you're not mm-hmm. familiar with it, yeah, A.J. Yeah. Jacobs wrote a book. He tried to live his life. He tried to live uh, for one calendar year, 100% according to the Bible. Mm-hmm. Johnny Galicki from Big Bang Theory yep. read the book, loved it, turned it into a pilot. We shot the pilot. The show got picked up for 13 episodes. We just got 13. We're done. We're not getting renewed for another season. But Johnny and some of the people at CBS took a liking to me. And we've been going back and forth, like trying to figure out what the next thing is. What can we do with Tony? What, what, what's the right. next thing? So. Well, that's a good place to be. Too, oh, I'm sure you loved the show, but I mean, you have to be able to cut bait with those, right? I mean, right. like, you, I mean, what you see, half of what makes it to TV. There were, I don't know, thirty before that that yeah. didn't go. Yeah. Right? I did. I did. I think six pilots before that that didn't even see the light of day. That's insane. That I thought, well, oh, this is definitely going. It's great. This is a great project. Nothing. And nothing comes from it. I bet you like working with Johnny, too. He's a Chicago guy, Great guy. I yeah, think. great guy. Yeah. He, I, I, I met him when I was like a kid hanging out in Chicago one time, and it was in between, it was, what, it was before Big Bang Theory had kicked right. off. So he was dude from Roseanne who right, right. maybe did a, a, I don't know, spot on a TV show here and there. And then to have him reignite his career like that, like, that has to make for an interesting personal yeah. makeup, right? Because yeah. it's two extreme highs with 
Now, I'm not going to say super low. I'm sure he was doing fine in between, but but there's some humbling that came in between. I, I bet he's absolutely. a great dude. Yeah, well. great yeah. guy, great com- great conversation to have. Like Johnny's yeah. very he's 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 on the ball. Uh, Superior Donuts just got pulled as well. We had did Dave, it really? Yeah. Oh, Dave, Dave Cagn and then Jermaine Fowler yeah. and that all those guys that were super talented. I liked that uh, that they gave so many comics jobs, but yeah, it, it, it's uh, the it same thing. Where it's Jermaine, like, uh, Dave, uh, Maz Brony. Yep, Rel uh, battle. battle. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. But and those are all super talented people that you assume are going to get other jobs. But I just find TV to be—I I don't even know if it's fascinating. Horrifying would be the word. That's what <laughs> like I want to do with my times, next sitcom. Man. My next sitcom, if I get if me and Johnny are able to put something together, I just want to stockpile that shit with with comics. Yeah. Well, it's why not tap into people who are just eager to be yeah. entertaining all right. the time, right? So. I'm so, sure it would make it so much easier to write a script if everybody was like, hey, Jermaine, what would you say here? What yeah, would you say? All right, boom, put it exactly. in. Exactly. As long as it's like a, a good group of people that's like gets along. Right. right. That could also Which be Which is funny. very hard to find. Yeah, I was Which is say, very, that extre- was- <laughs> extremely difficult to find. <laughs> it would be funny to, to do, as you're documenting, behind the scenes of that. Right. A very dysfunctional group of com- Like if the, all the people that do Crashing, which there's what, 750 comics yeah. on that show? If they I'm all hate each other. I'm still mad I haven't been on an episode yet. That's kind of bullshit. I'm still mad about that. I, I'm, I'm letting everybody know listening. <laughs> Do you listening. think it's personal? Uh, no, I don't think so. You got a problem so. with Pete? No, I don't have a problem with Pete. Actually, Pete was tweet, actually, tweet that out. When we, did the, Pete, uh, when, we did the, uh, when we did the table read for Living Biblically, yeah. Pete was in the room. And oh, the whole time it? I'm like, oh shit, that's Pete. That's, yeah. that's fucking Pete right there. Like, <laughs> to, way taller than I thought. Yeah, he's, he's like super six five. T- yeah, you gotta you let let people know that, man. You gotta <laughs> give a disclaimer. I walk in, I'm like, holy shit, what? Right. I thought you were a soft nerd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he does that. Uh, I'm curious too, since you're he here. Played for Gonzaga. <laughs> he, right. Yeah. He was he was a fan favorite at, at Gonzaga. Right. He fits the profile. With the, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, as far as uh, I guess recently, and we're doing this. We kind of have a speed thing. I know you got another thing to go to, but. Uh, Chris Hardwick, do you work with him at all? Or have you worked with him? I have not, no. I I've that, seen him at like clubs in LA. But. Yeah, so maybe you don't have an opinion on it. I was curious. He just got swept up in, I guess it's filed under Me Too with an really? ex. Did you see this? So an ex like spilled a bunch of um, of stuff from their relationship, basically, that made him right. look like a controlling prick. He's lost, like, they're kicking him off of Talking Dead. And this wasn't about what uh, did she what, what she the, said it was basically he was controlling he m- told her when they would have sex and all this stuff like I, it kind okay, well, of none of my girlfriends are gonna come out and say that <laughs> right none of was, I'm not worried about that at all it was <laughs> it was just a strange thing and if you're not familiar with it, it doesn't really it's not that important to get into but I'm just. I, it, it's going to lead me to my question. I'm scared being an entertain- that a girl's going to come out and say some shit about me like that. Even well, can I curse? Can't, wait, am I? Yeah, yeah okay. we're good. Yeah, yeah good, I'm scared yeah. a girl's going to because I've been drunk in clubs before, and I'm like, hey, what's up? Yo, you know, I said some rude stuff. And if I was if I under the that. guise of I'm trying to get some pussy, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, and that could be filed under he aggressively came. To right. No, no, right. Call, what they call it? Sexual aggression. Yo, everything. A, let me say something. Yeah. Everything a black man does to get some pussy. <laughs> Can be filed under sexual aggression. Listen, black guys in a club, we grab girl, sweetheart, sweetheart, grabbing a girl's arm, yeah. sexual aggression. Yo, blue dress, blue dress. Damn, girl, you wearing that dress, sexual aggression. Uh huh. That's what, that's like the whole fucking definition the is like, yeah. every black guy's like, oh shit, I'm going to jail. Short A, damn, ma, uh, mm, mm, look at that. We in trouble. Out of here. Right? All of that. So I'm, I know I've done some of that. So I, I just hope they don't wait until it's like, HBO inks Tony Rock for 20 fucking TV shows and it's like every girl just starts he tried to kiss yeah. me in a club one night which I, do, which I did mm-hmm. I tried to kiss girls in a club that I didn't have consent to kiss sure damn you so girl mm, you smell good like damn is that you you smell delicious you smell like oh my good that's sexual aggression right and again too like I get I'm glad that assholes are getting outed yeah. on this stuff and it, but like somebody again like you said what if you do ink that huge HBO project right. you're doing on yeah is it? Uh, That's why I'm going to be forthcoming with all of it. So before I even sign, <laughs> you put it, just like, before I sign this, I'll let y'all know. Listen, yeah. I'm a dick. <laughs> I've been an asshole. So if I sign yeah. this, you guys understand that. I, I said in an interview at this weird place in St. Louis. Look yeah. here, here's going the forward, thing. I will right. not be this way. But yeah, just so we know, five what we're years ago, with I might have grabbed the girl's butt in the club. Right. Yeah. So does that change how you how you act, how you carry yourself, who, how you who you interact with? No. Currently, no. no. Good. I think that's a good sign. No. Because you're you don't need to change up. I anything. say stuff on stage sometimes and I'll say, 
you know, I'll say something to a, a young lady in the room, and then I'll say, you know what? If I wasn't on stage right now, I'd be in so much trouble for saying that. Right. But since I'm up here, I kind of got a little bit of a. You have he's the, a comedian, you know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so silly. Yeah. yeah. You have that. So I'll, before we get you out of here, curious about growing up. Uh, obviously, the, the family best childhood ever had to be right. The best like, childhood ever. I've met your younger brother. You can tell a lot by people's disposition. Your yeah. younger brother's smart, pays attention, yeah. has a good time. I, I've mentioned I've talked to Sherrod a bunch. I, yeah. I enjoy talking to Sherrod. I think he's very funny. You're very funny. Obviously, we all know Chris yes, as well, yes. who seems to get along with a lot of people too. I'm sure he has his yeah. beefs, but like just as far from the outside as much as I can, I sit here and I talk to people, I analyze people all the time. Seems like a pretty strong family or at least a confident Best family. And that ever. comes from good upbringing, has to, yeah. right? We grew up on Decatur Street in Brooklyn. Sherrod lived... Sherrod lived on the first house, the very first. When you turn onto our block, Sherrod house was the very first house. I lived like down in the middle of the block. So uh, Sherrod was at our house every day. Uh, Sherrod grew up with two sisters, no brothers. I have seven brothers, two sisters. Seven. Uh, yeah. It was the best, man. We didn't have a lot. So when you don't have a lot, you use the things that are innate. Right. So you use your... Imagination. You use your creativity. You use your uh, your your camaraderie. Comes you know is a, is a strong thing. You look out for each other. If one person has this and you don't have that, you guys share that. If I have this and you don't have that, we share that. So now we both have the two things that we didn't have. We we have it, you know, available to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, you protect each other because we grew up in the hood, so we had to be very protective of each other. There we, is something about that too when. I'm an older. I have a younger brother who's yeah. like six foot seven, so he's giant. But like, <laughs> there is something about your little brother either maybe being in an altercation or in one. Right. You take it to like there's a whole nother. You don't realize you have that rage. Yeah. <laughs> until yes, yes. You see that happening. Yes. You're like, oh, this is gonna be really ugly. Yeah. Right? And my dad always told us if one of y'all are in a fight, y'all are all in a fight. <laughs> That's I don't want to hear. Man. He would say, my father would, if one of us got in a fight, he would come home and my mother would tell him the story. He would call us all downstairs and say, okay, what happened? And like, if you were the one in the fight, you tell us, tell me the story. And while you're telling the story, he would stop you and go, so what did you do? Ah, uh, What did yes. you do? Right. And it's like, oh, then I jumped in and then, okay, then I jumped in. He's like, okay, good, good, good. I don't want to hear you didn't do anything and somebody was trying to beat up your brother. You so got to take, it, you gotta take it, care of each other. Yeah, then yeah. it turned into don't fight the Rock Brothers because you got to fight all of them. That's There's good. There's too many of them to fight. So then people would leave us alone. And we Coming just out like, of the woodwork. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, it was the best. I, I love it, man. And we would sit on the stoop every Saturday. This, this is where the comedy comes in, just a, yeah. you know, a quick, quick a No, snap. please. Take, so we take would, as much time. Saturday mornings, my mother would clean the house. We would do, have to do our chores before we could go outside. So we would get up early, knock our chores out. We'd do, be good for the day. Then my mother, you know, she would do dishes and mop and all that stuff. So she would say, get out the house so I can clean. Right. And we would go sit on the stoop. And we would sit on the stoop of our house, uh, of, uh, on Decatur Street, in front of our yard. And we couldn't go out the gate, but we had to do something to entertain ourselves. So it was anybody that walks past, we're going to snap on them. So it was like, all right, you're up first. And then whoever walks past. Why didn't past, you have a documentary crew boom, then? That snap, was... snap, snap, just whatever. You're big looking like, look at your shoes looking like. And it's the hood, so everybody isn't dressed nice. And people sure. look kind of off. And some people are dirty and there's crackheads. And yeah. we just, comedy, comedy, comedy. So then it became a thing where every Saturday, all the kids on our block would come to our yard <laughs> and wait for waiting. us to come out. And we would yeah. come out like, okay, who's getting it today? And like, Andre, you up first. And like, oh, you looking like your big hat looks like a damn... <laughs> <laughs> sack of potatoes and your mother looks like your father so fatty and it was that's where it started it was like we got that's an audience spark of this in whole our yard thing yeah. Yeah. that's amazing man so if, as you guys have grown up evolved had your own individual careers uh anything negative that comes from having so many talented people in a family uh negative yes we uh getting those texts a, like a little bit of like i would say fake hate uh -huh. the fake hate you know uh he just got it because of his brother, you know. Uh, yeah, Chris put them on, uh, stuff like. But I, I, that's negative. It's like it's that would be we, it's annoying. Like, it's like right off. We don't even pay it any attention. Yeah, you can't really too. Can't, we don't pay it at the money. end of the day. Too, you're in the profession where I've been doing stand up. You got it or not? I've been doing stand up for over ten years. So if my brother made some phone calls to get me in, I would have been exposed a long time ago. Too late now, right? If yeah, Jordan was being passed along, he wouldn't be where he is now. And he wouldn't be, if he was just like, oh, let's put him in. It would have been exposed a long time ago. And you wouldn't have, this is the thing that, that will tell you, let you know the telltale sign. 
I wouldn't have the respect of my peers like I do. Correct. You're hanging out with the the yeah. elite. They wouldn't say like, man, that guy's yeah. Well, and it's not, again too. You'll see it too, and I'm not trying to pick on Saturday Night Live, but you'll see people who have been in movies or famous TV shows that come through that can draw a huge crowd, or right. just they're known for something. Being Chris Rock's younger brother isn't going to sell out right. a club right. four nights in a row. Right. Right. And you it's not to gonna. It, it doesn't guarantee a good show. So it's like you could you could say when I first started going you on might the road. Fool him once. You know what's crazy? When I first started going out, I'll tell another quick story. So when I first started going out, tell I was. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much time we had. Take it. Okay, so I was. I was. Uh, I was Tracy Morgan's opening act for a few years. I was uh, Kim Cole's opening act for a few years. Mm-hmm. I was um, John Witherspoon's opening act. So we would do shows in like you know, bananas in Jersey and like South Jersey, like little comedy clubs where they could, sure. you know. And I remember when I was opening for Kim Coles, I was, uh, I had a tight 10, 15 minutes, whatever they needed me to do. It was tight. It was strong. So after the show, the girls, the young girls that were in the room were like, we want to get a picture with Tony, with Tony Rock. We want to get a picture with Tony. The other people would wait for Kim. So I'm in the back backstage like, oh, oh shit, they want to take pictures with me? Okay. And I would go out and the comedy club owners kind of saw like, hey, he's getting his own little draw right. off of their shows, off of Tracy's show, off of Kim's show, off of John Withers. So we'll bring him back to headline. We'll bump him up to headliner and bring him back. But what they, the bill, literally, the bill was June 5th through 8th, Chris Rock's brother, Tony Rock. Damn. That was because that was- And you the, weren't putting yourself up like I was that. not. Yeah. No, hell, never. No. But they knew we could get asses in the seats like that. Right. And comedy club owners don't really care about the art of stand-up comedy. Sure. They don't care about nurturing the craft. They just care about two drink minimum and Keep tickets the at the door. Yeah. Right. So I, I got it. I knew what it was. But then once I, people started coming out to see me and realized, oh, he's nothing like his brother, has his own voice. He's actually a pretty good comic. It was like comedy clubs were like, you know what? We don't even need to do that. We can just bring him in as Tony Rock. <laughs> that but that's when I started going on the road headlining. It was Chris Rock's brother. <laughs> That's, that's it was the worst shit ever. Yes, it was, the sh- it was the shittiest fucking poster. I'd never kept any of them. Uh, I think, man, you need to get a copy of those for the documentary. Though. Yeah, I do. Like, I to do. show I do. where I you've do. come yes. from, though. Yes, I do. Oh, my gosh. Tony Rock at Helium Comedy Club all weekend long. Dude, so much fun. Yes, thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Thank Appreciate you. Thank it, guys. you very much. Go see Tony, Helium Comedy Club, SCL.com. You can see him all weekend long. Thanks, guys.